Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the interconnect delay model. One of the critical problems faced by high density VLSI chips today is to deal with interconnect lines. Interconnects are nothing but wires and this interconnect introduces delay into our system. So it's very important for us to model this interconnect lines so that we can predict an approximate value of our delay. Let's start with a simple isolated interconnect line. Here is my interconnect where this is my input, this is my output. The dimensions of the interconnect line are shown with the length L, width W and thickness which is equal to T. So, and this is nothing but the thickness of my oxide which is TOx. The line resistance of this interconnect from input to output is nothing but given by R line which we know is nothing but sheet resistance RS of the interconnect into L by W. The unit of this is going to be ohms because length and width both will have a unit which is meters or centimeters which will get cancelled out and sheet resistance would have a unit which is ohms so R line is equal to the unit is in ohms. R line is nothing but sheet resistance into L by W where L by W is the number of squares with dimension W into W. We have seen this in the lower classes. Now we not need to define the resistance per unit length. So let's say this is resistance per unit length R which is nothing but RS by W. The unit of this is going to be ohm by centimeter. So this is R line from input to output which is given by sheet resistance into L by W where L by W is nothing but the number of squares with dimensions W by W. So this is the dimensions where this is W and this is W as well. There are number of squares. This is nothing but resistance per unit length which is nothing but sheet resistance by W. Then we know that R line is nothing but let's put this in equation above. R line would be equal to R small r into L where this is nothing but resistance per unit length and this is length which will get cancelled out so R line would also have a resistance or the unit in ohms. This shows that there will be an increase in R line if there will be an increase in the interconnect length. This we will see as we move ahead. Let's go ahead and quickly do the similar analysis for C line as well. C line is nothing but the parallel plate capacitor can be estimated by a simple parallel plate formula which is nothing but permittivity of the oxide into area which is nothing but L into W area of the interconnect upon the thickness oxide which is nothing but the spacing and the unit here would be given in farads. Now this is nothing but C line is nothing but the self capacitance of the line and we have made a first order approximate and hence it comes out to a parallel plate capacitor. In real time it's not going to be this. In real time there will be fringing capacitance as well. Fringing capacitance is nothing but from the side walls of the interconnect also there will be some capacitance. This is what I have shown. So with that fringing capacitance into consideration we can have a capacitance per unit length C derived from an empirical equation. So this is just an empirical equation the derivation is not there this is nothing but capacitance per unit length like the way we found out resistance per unit length which is equal to permittivity of the oxide into 1.15 into W by TOx plus 2.8 again that as I mentioned the derivation is not there into T upon TOx this is the thickness of the interconnect this is the thickness of the oxide raised to 0.22 this is farad by centimeter as I said this is capacitance per unit length. So if I have to find C line now it's going to be capacitance per unit length which is small c into length. So this is how I get my C line which is nothing but the unit is in farads. So from the previous clip I got my R line which was equal to R into L and here I got my C line which is nothing but C into L. Now if we find the values of R line and C line we can construct a circuit model which is nothing but a single rung ladder model. This is nothing but R line. This is nothing but my C line. And this is called a single rung ladder model. It's a ladder of R and C. Where I can easily say that my tau is nothing but R line into C line. Where we know that R line is small r into L and C line is small c into L. So this is nothing but R C into L square. If I put this some value constant say B, then tau 
or the delay varies or delay increases with length so if length is 1 my length is 100 my delay is going to be 100 square with a direct proportionality assuming that or presuming that this is constant now we want to go ahead and make a model of this so let's quickly go ahead 